अंजी हाँ so much thank you so much children actually five of those uh, children are my children so <laughs> i'm extra excited to introduce them to you anyway i just got a message this is twice excited now because we also have in our midst the national president of the family federation for world peace of our home country the philippines reverend la hollow so let's welcome him to give also his greetings to all of us and to our honorees tonight. Reverend Haluk. Good evening to all our beloved brothers and sisters in America and good morning here in the Philippines, especially to all our special, very special guests who are uh, participating in this very prestigious program. Especially I would like also to greet our regional president Dr. Chong Shik Yong, our former regional president in Asia Pacific, whom we miss so much. So I'm really grateful to be invited to this uh, prestigious uh, program. I would like to really congratulate all the awardees, and uh, actually it really brings me so much inspiration to know about this program of the Philippine International Community in America, especially that this time, really, the family is very, very important to uplift and really be able to uh, use as really the, our way to solve the problems in our society. I'm really, really proud of all the, I, I heard 17 awardees tonight for really raising up their children and even grandchildren. So also that is also my hope as parent. I hope that uh, really one day can be able to also really become like them and really spread this kind of uh, uh, practice, not only in America, but in the whole world. Really, everything begins in the family. 
That's why I'm really, really grateful for this uh, opportunity to witness. This is my first time, so I'm really uh, also wondering what this uh, this uh, 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 award, awarding ceremony that I heard uh, it started in 1994 when uh, National Parents' Day was uh, announced by the uh, former President Bill Clinton. I think this is really very good program to really encourage our families really to become the best mother and best father, become, become best parent, nothing can compare. So I really salute all our uh, parents who will be awarding tonight. Congratulations to all of you. And also thank you so much to uh, Filipino International Community for such a wonderful program. May God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, President L.A. Halog from the Philippines. So yes, uh, maybe you can introduce the same program to the Philippines. And maybe the President of the Philippines can also enact a law to recognize outstanding parents in the Philippines. All right, to introduce our keynote speaker tonight, may I call the board member of the FICA, the Philippine International Community of America, it is Joy Terriot to introduce our speaker. Ms. Terriot. Good evening, everyone. Distinguished honorees, the representative from Consul Ricardi from Consul, our Philippine Consulate, our leaders, FICA family, friends. It is my honor and privilege to introduce to you our guest speaker with us tonight. Dr. Chong Sik Yong holds a doctorate in theology at Sanmon University and a master's degree in business administration from Guangzhou University. Before coming to America, Dr. Yong served as the regional chair of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification Asia and the Universal Peace Federation. Currently, he is the regional president of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification North America. He is a great father, teacher, and mentor to all of us Filipinos in America. And I am honored to be called by him his relatives. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome warmly our beloved Dr. Song Sik Yong. Dr. Yong, welcome. Thank you. Um, our National President of our Family Federation for World Peace, now Kimi Ushiroda, and then just now I can see that our LA National Leader to Philippines, and uh, all the uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Good morning in the Philippines. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Good evening. Magandang balita sa inyong lahat. I love you. I love Philippines. I love Filipinos so much. Do you know how much do I love you and the Philippines? And uh, finally, I decided one of the, my son, I asked him to marry Filipino. Finally, he accepted Filipino spouse. And then my daughter, you know, daughter, you know, the Filipino. Do you know how much I do? I love Filipino and Filipinos. Today, I am really honored to speak with you today at this special occasion the first outstanding parents award program thank you all for joining us as with many other events we are meeting uh, we are meeting virtually i'm sorry i can't meet each of you in person and get to know you over dinner or lunch as i would have liked to this is also the first time i am attending this event since it's my first year in America, but as some of you may know, I have been working in the Philippines for many, many, many years. 
And I feel very, very close to Filipino culture and spirit. And so I am so happy to see you all here today. And I look forward to many more opportunities to share with you. Today we are here to focus on the family, particularly on the role of the parents in the family. I am really pleased to learn of National Parents Day in America. It means everyone understands the importance of the parents, not only within the family, but in the makeup of the community, the society, and entire nation. Despite the challenging year, we can also see this time as an opportunity to really examine our lives and our uh, priorities. The pandemic forced us to look inside ourselves and center on what matters the most. It made us all realize how important our families are. And we are more time to evaluate our relationship. And today we celebrate some of the most important relationships, the one within the couples and that between parents and children. We always hear that Good families are the cornerstone of a healthy, strong societies. Why is it? Father and Mother Moon told us that the family is the school of love, school of peace. In the family, we can learn from the early childhood the four kinds of love and grow through the four realms of heart. We learn the love of children to their parents. What do we call filial piety. As we grow, we learn sibling love, the love between brothers and sisters. We learn conjugal love, the love between husband and wife. And we learn parent love, the love of parents for their children. According to Father and Mother Moon, the family is the basic unit, unit where God can dwell. The family is where God can experience these realms of love with, uh, with us and become the center of our lives and our families. The parents are the representatives of the God for their children. From God and through the parents, all love flows. In Father Moon's own words, parental love is a primary love, a sound man who grew up with a parental love understands what love is. Because children love their parents, they come to learn love from their experience of loving parents. That's the highest joy for children. Without having parents, we never experience love. So today, we honor some exemplary parents. I am really proud of you. We not only honor those who showed their outstanding commitment to their families, we also honor those who serve their communities as parental figures. When you develop a true parental heart, you start seeing everyone else from that parental viewpoint. This is the point when we are no longer selfish. We come to care not only for our own children, but for all children, for our neighbors, our friends, and anyone in our communities. This creates a stronger bond that leads to a strong society, where families can really help each other grow. You know, you see now current situation, current you know, young people, what's going on? That's why in this kind of era, Father Moon said, we need to have parental leadership. If we have the parental leadership, we can solve any problems. He said, then why the parental leadership? First one, parental leadership is unconditionally Giving, giving, and giving, and giving, and giving, and giving. And come totally forget what I have given, and still want to give more. Secondly, he said, 
parental leadership, leadership of the unconditional sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Like when parents sacrifice their own children at risk of their life, sacrifice and completely forget what I have sacrificed, still want to sacrifice more. And third leadership is talking about unconditionally invest and invest and invest and invest. Forget how much do I invest for my object partner. And then the object partner better than me. We need to have this kind of a parental leadership. You know, as a prime minister, as a president, as a social leader, you know, any even school, the president, whatever, any leaders, if we have that kind of parental leadership, giving and giving and giving, unconditionally giving, like the parents, and sacrifice, 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 you know, unconditionally sacrifice for my society, my nation, my neighbor, my people, including my children. And then invest and invest and invest. Completely forget what I have invested. Continuously invest. And then finally the object partner is better than me. There is no jealousy. Continuously invest. If we have that kind of a parental leadership, what kind of family will be? What kind of society will be? What kind of nation will be? What kind of the world will be? This era need to have parental leadership, I am telling you. This is the key point. That's why those who are today receiving the award, you are that kind of the model figure. We need to really multiply to our society, our nation, and whole world. This kind of parental leadership I learned from our father moon and mother moon, they are teaching what the real leadership. He said, simply can say that true leadership is a parental leadership. When parents are serving the children, even though hard the parents about the about their body, it's like their body, like a you know, servant of a servant, slave, and then completely serving for children, but still very happy, internally have a parental heart. Do not have any expectation from children continuously giving and sacrificing and investing for children. If we as a leader, if we do for the society and nation and world, what kind of the world will we? Can you imagine about that? So that I would like to mention this is the main point, parental leadership. You come from South Asia where the culture of honoring the parents is much stronger than in the West. So I think you know what I mean. But as we live here in America, we can help spread this culture of the strong family bonds to the communities around us. Do you know why I do I love Philippine Filipinos? One reason. Filipino people? Very, very much family oriented. They love their own family. For example, some of the children working from overseas. I have experience in Korea. You know, some Filipino couples are very poor with many, many Korean. Very poor. But sometimes she skipped a meal and save money. Send to her own family in Philippines. I totally moved, admired. You know, majority of the Filipino is like that. You know, those who are Western people are the very selfish. I don't care my father, I don't care my mother, I don't care my, you know, family member, you know. Just they only focus on how to survive by themselves. But Filipino, even though I can sacrifice, their priority is to their family first. 
That's why I am telling you, Filipino have the really family-oriented people. I'm really proud of this kind of the culture. Please do not lose this kind of culture. But also, I'd like to encourage not just only loving your family. One of the you know uh, problem of the Filipino because I love you. That's why I frankly tell you that. Filipino, even though love your own family, I think more than any other nation. One thing, when I leading the young people in the Philippines, I cannot find young people who loves their own nation. Now we to find patriotism. No patriotism. Why Korean become Korean nation become so strong? Because of patriotism, they put my nation more than my family, more than anything else. That's why Korean nation, within short period after war and disaster, why they develop so much? Because they put the my nation as a top priority. I am telling you, Filipino, my brothers and sisters, my beloved brothers and sisters, not just when you love your own family, if all these day young people in the Philippines from the overseas, if you put your nation as a top priority together with your family, I think the nation of the Philippines can lead the whole world. I am telling you guarantee. That's why we need to raise up our young people, our Filipino young people to become the center of the world through the loving family, through the loving my own nation. Without Father Moses, without loving your nation, why are you talking about loving God? It is nonsense. That is my recommendation because I live there a long time. They have the already basically big, strong culture of the family. Anyway, I, because of time limit, I cannot say much. You know, our Father was talking about the universal principle. Regardless of your religious, national, and cultural background, you will find the family unit at the base on human relation, of human relationship. Everyone has parents, but when we look around us, we can see that families are having a hard time. There's a growing crisis, and it's more and more challenge for families to stay together and raise their children safely in a wholesome way. This is why we create so many problems to celebrate families, to educate and support parents and children to stay formed in their relationship with God and the values they hold dear. At the same time, we know that for the couple to become loving parents, they also need to experience true love in their own relationship. Loving each other is the first condition. Letting God in our family start with inviting God into our marriage. That's why we promote a marriage blessing. Now we are going to invite our founder, Mother Moon, uh, to America in June. I'd like to suggest all of you can join our blessing festival. I think you can have an unforgettable experience. You know, marriage and blessing is very important. This is why we uplift the marriages and encourage a couple to make this eternal love commitment to each other. We believe that through the loving relationship and building a spiritual bond between the couple and God, we can become better parents to our children. When God's love flows through the each of us to our spouse, it can then flow from the couple to the children. I believe that Programs like this encourage each of us to be more responsible and more committed within our relationship and our families. I hope that through this uh, program today, you can be inspired to let God be center of your family and let your family serve your community and your nation and spread these values so we can truly see a uh, change around us as our communities become closer and we become more loving to one another. Thank you very much. God bless the Philippines and Filipinos. Thank you, Dr. Yong. Thank you.
Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Young. That was thought-provoking, stimulating, warm, and inspiring words and insights that you have shared with us tonight. Parental leadership is the way to go. We will truly remember this uh, this uh, use, this words that you shared with us, and we will try to cultivate them in our own families. Thank you once again. Let's give another round of applause to our very beloved Dr. Young. We are now ready to introduce and present to you our 17 Outstanding Parents for 2021. The Outstanding Parents and Awards Gala was designed to recognize and uh, celebrate the best couples on the face of the earth. Our honorees were nominated for, in, for being married for at least 10 years without a history of divorce. Exemplified qualities of sacrificial love overcame major obstacles to provide for their personal development and the happiness of their children, exhibit qualities of personal moral virtue and religious commitment, as well as their dedication and services in their own communities. So ladies and gentlemen, we would like now to introduce to you and present to you our honorees for tonight. They already received their uh, plaques and may I remind our honorees to bring your plaques out when we will be calling your couple and I will be introducing them uh, with their short biographies. First off, let's, uh, let me introduce Mr. Nestor and Mrs. Purification Alahas from Waldorf, Maryland, nominated by Elena Bahian. Married for 44 years, have four children and three grandchildren. Nestor and Purification were married early at the young age of 20 and 19, respectively. Nestor had to work abroad in Libya, Africa for 21 years. But despite these many years of being away from each other and the children, the family was intact because of the fidelity of both the husband and the wife. While uh, Nestor was abroad, was abroad Purification worked as a teacher in Cebu City. All four children graduated with flying colors. They all have master's degree and a bachelor's degree. Uh, as the saying goes, no cross, no cross, no glory. So before this educational success of the children, a lot of the challenges crossed their way. This came in many forms as like car accidents or uh, sicknesses, which made them desperate and discouraged to continue living. However, they weather the storms and withstand the test of time. Uh, as a family, they remain steadfast and strong with each other's presence and assistance. Prayer never forsaken them, nor God who always with them all the way. So um, they receive outstanding achievements, which includes academic awards of excellence, outstanding athlete, joyful service award, outstanding teacher, fund assistance in private education, scholar for masters and the doctorate program. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our first honorees, Mr. Nestor and Mrs. Purification Alahas. Please unmute yourself and say uh, briefly something. It is our great honor to have been chosen as one of the outstanding parents for 2021. With this award is our sincere appreciation and gratitude to the Filipino International Community of America. We are so happy to have received this award because uh, this is not a piece of wood, but uh, with well-decorated prints in it, this is an emblem of our success our pair, as parents. And uh, to quote, to solve for, in order to read for a year, in order to read for a year, so in order to read for 10 years, plant a tree, in order to read for a lifetime, love your children, 
and raise them the best way possible. Thank you very much and good evening to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nestor and Mrs. Perifika Sean Alahas, and congratulations. Our next honoree is Mr. Alfonso and Mrs. Faye Arenasa from Laurel, Maryland, nominated by Esther Batino. Married for 34 years, have three children and four grandchildren. Faye encountered challenges with regard to teaching due to difficult student behaviors. She was challenged in her immigration application as well and was denied. In 2012, however, he had to exit yeah. uh, to the U.S. to Canada many times in order to, her, to um, keep, extend her stay in the U.S. But after eight years, Faye got her permanent residency. Both Alphonse and Faye are cancer survivors. Faye is a teacher in Thomas Johnson Middle School in Prince George County in Maryland. Both Alphonse and Faye got their U.S. citizenship this year, 2021, after 14 years of their stay yeah, in the United States. So uh, Faye is active member and officer of the United Federation of Film Educators, and she conducted professional development, virtual teaching and learning, and created the Unified Co-op in Maryland that helped teachers financially. So may I present to you our second owner is... Mr. Alfonso and Mrs. Faye Arenasa. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to, in behalf of my husband, I would like to say thank you so much to the Filipino uh, International Community of America for this great honor. It's not easy to have a award as a outstanding parents because it's not easy to become an outstanding parents it's so hard all right so thank you so much guys and thank you thank you very much and congratulations once again thank you our third honorees are mr michael angelo and mrs silvana Colmenares from queens new york nominated by Gisli Tohu. Yukana's parents was divorced when she was a teenager, and uh, that was a challenge for her. Silvana, or I call her Vanette, <laughs> got married right after college, had four children, and established a few businesses in the Philippines, but experienced a stressful life that, could, uh, that she could not handle. So she decided to come to America and became a turning point. it became a turning point in her life. Ever since, she never regretted coming to the United States. There was a time during uh, Vanette's business in the Philippines, decided to downsize their costs, decided to lay off uh, you know, her employees, but then she chose the right thing, uh, which is moral, which is a moral thing to do. Silvana was caught between an employee who was loyal and not at all skillful between another employee who was very adept and bring result in the business. It was such a difficult decision for her. In the end, Silvana decided to go to the skillful employee because she knew that he could get other opportunities as well. Silvana volunteer works in America related to food distribution with the Food Bank of New York. And every Friday, Michelangelo and Silvana assist the Hindu religious sect to feed the homeless in New York. Uh, Silvana grew up as a Catholic, but when she got married, became a born-again fundamentalist and became a leader in a cell group. Silvana is a member of the Honor Society of the Theta Alpha Kappa. She received the service award from the Unification Theological Seminary, received highest honors from Stanford Perry Institute in 2009, and a student of the Doctor of Ministry of UTS. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Michael Angelo and Silvana Colmenares. Together. Mike and me would like to thank Micah for this honor. 44 years of marriage and we're still rocking and rolling. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Vanette and Mike, Michael Angelo. Congratulations once again. Let's move on to our next honoree, Mr. John and Mrs. Nanette Dorowski from Greenport, New York 
nominated by Esther Batino. Both John and Nunez served 12 years abroad as foreign missionaries for the unification movement. John served in Kuwait for two years, wrote a book on the parallels of history between Christianity and Islam, but later was imprisoned and tortured in Kuwait, with the implication that men and women were equal. Nunez served in the Bahamas for two years and saved the nation from turning communistic like its neighbor Cuba, while teaching unification philosophy Catherine. to many parliamentarians and senators. Can you Annette come? then went to the Philippines and was appointed the first national leader of the Philippines. And within the year was joined by John. John was appointed the regional leader of all Southeast Asia, Catherine. which included Taiwan, Hong Kong, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. During John and Annette's five years in the Philippines, Anji. they opened the first 12 mission centers in the main cities that recruited and trained the first 225 Filipino missionaries. John and Annette were transferred to Australia, with John being appointed the national leader and national region of Oceania, which included Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, New Zealand, and New Caledonia. The Dorosskis have six children and 12 grandchildren, Catherine. and have been married for 46 long years. Wow. The Roskies train the children to go out to foreign countries to serve by taking part-time jobs, earning their own airfares. Can you close the, the bedroom door? The children served in 11 different countries, including China, Japan, Korea, Guatemala, Trinidad, Jamaica, Honduras, the Philippines, Belarus, Dominican Republic, and St. Lucia. The Dorosky family fully supports the Filipino communities in America for many, many years. Even sending financial donations to the Philippines in terms of calamities, disasters, and activities of the unification movement in the Philippines. Friends, may I present to you Mr. John and Ms. Zanette Durowski. Congratulations. We want to thank everyone for this award. Um, you know, we worked with a sister organization, and for years I nominated people to become national parent, to receive the National Parents Day Award. And I have many people said, oh, with your family, you should be receiving the award. I said, oh, no, oh, no. Um, it, uh, you know, this is my job to nominate other people. So I was very shocked when, when they nominated me for this award. And we're very grateful for the care and love that you're giving us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Doroski family. Thank you. You, you, you thank I really appreciate for your hard work as a missionary. I'm really proud of you. Woo! <laughs> yes, we are truly proud of you and we love you back. Congratulations once again. All right, moving on. Our fifth honor is Mr. Michael and Mrs. Annalisa Floresca from Oxon Hill, Maryland, nominated by Elena Bahia. All right, I think uh, they're not here tonight, so we will skip the introduction. Let's move on to our honorary number six, Mr. Oscar Jesus and Ms. Nieves Gariando from Sunbury, Ohio, nominated by Cirilo Hagopas. Married for 47 years. Oh my goodness. Have four children and four grandchildren. Both work as nurse assistant in a hospital in New York City, but they are now retired. Oscar and Nieves are hardworking, humble, honest, and God fearing couple. They are active in Catholic charismatic movement in New York City. Every Christmas season, they provided packed foods for the homeless people in New York City. Both were volunteers for the Life and Spirit Seminars in the Catholic Charismatic Group. And the family used to pray the rosary every Sunday night, attended church every Sunday and holidays, and attended Catholic Charismatic Conventions and Retreats. Oscar and Nieves were both recipients of an Outstanding Employee Awards as nurse assistants in North Shore Hospital in New York City. So may I present to you our six honorees, Mr. Oscar Jesus and Mrs. Nieves Gariando. Congratulations. 
Uh, we would like to thank FICA for this very prestigious award. A uh, special mention to Cirilo Agupas who takes his time in nominating us. Uh, and to coincide with our 47 years of togetherness. Thank you and God bless everyone. Thank you so much. 47 years. Right. Our next honoree is Mr. Gerald and his Lara Inserto from Newburg, Indiana. Nominated by Ruben Olgado. Married for 16 years, have two children. Lara worked as a physical therapist and Gerard a network engineer. They're passionate in reaching out to educate and promote financial awareness, not just Filipinos nationally, but every hardworking families in the United States. Two things that they teach their children. Treat everybody the same way you want to be treated. And there is no good and bad words. It is the manner of how they're used that defines their meaning. They donate, they volunteer, and feed residents of missionaries of charity and part of the committee of Star for One, a charitable foundation established by Marisol and Kim Goyena with the purpose of raising funds to be given to families in the Philippines that were affected by calamities and disasters. They as a family, they attend weekly mass at the church, but due to the pandemic, of course, everybody is now online. So they follow morning affirmations with the Lord, thanking Him for the blessings that they receive every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so pleased to present to you Mr. Gerard and Ms. Lara in Certo. Congratulations. Well, I can say it's an honor and a privilege to have been nominated and um, recognized uh, being a parent. Uh, I know we still have a long way to go, but um, and thank you for uh, for the recognition to uh, we have been for the nomination and everything. Uh, everybody have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations once more. Our eight honorees are Attorney Rommel and Attorney Melody Manuel from Elizabeth, New Jersey, nominated by Jay Alvarez. Are married for 19 years, have four children. They arrive in America as international students with limited hours of work to provide financial support for the family. Lost his job in 2006 recession without health insurance overcame the financial difficulties by passing the New York bar exams and became a New York attorney, practiced immigration law by giving free legal service to the needy. One of the important qualities of this couple is honesty and integrity, giving free legal services and helping undocumented individuals. Um, attorney Rommel and Attorney Melody contributes to the community uh, as speakers and free legal services also at the Philippine Consulate in New York and uh, legal and consult in free legal consultations. They also do church volunteer work at St. Teresa Church and they are both devout Roman Catholic members. They also are associated with the Sacred Heart of Jesus and Gawad Kalinga supporters. Some of the outstanding achievements is uh, uh, their uh, cum laude graduates of the University of the Philippines, members of the Integrated Bar in the Philippines, New York Bar Passers, Japan Ibo Malaya Volunteer, and Attorney Melody is a Master's of the U.S. Law Scholarship in the U.S. So uh, they, because of some of their uh, emergency, family emergency, they couldn't join us tonight, but they sent a video uh, as they receive their awards. Um, this Share the video. Thank you for yeah. this wonderful recognition. Thank you for the recognition of our mother and our father. And we hope that we'll have more opportunities to help. And we are very thankful for Pika for giving this kind of opportunity to make Thank 
you so much, Attorney Romel and Melody um, Manuel, our honorees from New Jersey. Uh, so, and our ninth honorees is Engineer Silver and Pastor Christina Mabalot from Somerville, South Carolina, nominated by Doreen Ugema. There you go. So I have a pre-page of bio here. I'm just going to cut a little bit. <laughs> so the family story didn't go as smoothly without battle, pain, and sacrifices, but beyond all of this, to, to the victories they have achieved is the presence of God and Jesus in their lives. So they migrated in the U.S. in 2006, and as they experienced tremendous difficulties to survive in the country, they initiated a nonprofit organization called Pilgrims International Incorporated to help immigrants get established in America. Silver and Tina are both pastors and serve God and Jesus through their ministry. As the Silver founded United for the Harvest, an organization of pastors, ministers, and lay leaders, which serves as support group and concentrates as a group that supports missions work for God's kingdom building. He is also the administrative pastor of The Way, The Truth, Life Church, and Pastor Silver is also a member of the American Clergy Leadership Conference. Uh, growing up and being seeing their parents active involved in the community, Polo and, and Jara joined them in their endeavor helping their parents in the community affairs. Jara is, or Paolo served as a military, in the military as foreman in the U.S. Navy. Uh, he worked as a dental assistant. Jara is visually impaired, inherited her fighting spirit and confidence from her mother. She triumphed against bullies from school and stood up as a leader. She graduated international studies with high honors in College of Charleston. So our awardees here are two exemplary people who will bring up a new meaning to life and joy. Silver, who contracted polio when he was a toddler, has a mobility impairment and walks with the aid of a leg brace. But despite of body aches and pains, he is tolerating and getting immune to, he found joy through music. He sings and plays guitar, and no discomfort or physical limitation can restrict him from achieving his dream in life. Um, with his hard work and perseverance, he became an engineer, and of course his ability didn't stop him either from pursuing or winning the heart of the love of his life, Pastor Christina Yanis Mabalot. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our honorees and also they will give a response on behalf of the first nine awardees. Let's welcome and may present to you Engineer Silver and Christina Mabalot. Yeah, then we'll just. Yeah, um, he's um, asked me to go first. I guess he's ladies first. I do, we, in behalf of our family, we'd like to thank the Philippine International Community of America, Universal Peace Federation, Family Federation, um, and all the organizations. I am so sorry if I missed um, some of the organizations, but I would like to thank and acknowledge all the families that are joining us internationally. Because really the family is, you know, as the family goes, so does the nation and so does the world. So if the family is, is intact and God is in the center of the family, and that's the, uh, that, that's also the end of the, uh, what happens to the nation and the world. If, in case some of you don't know, I'm physically and totally blind and physical blindness may be an obstacle but like any other obstacle obstacles can lead to opportunities for me it was the ability to see with my heart that and, and soothed from my physical blindness so when i realized my weakness i relied in the omnipotent power of god i walk by faith not by sight it's very neutral and figurative <laughs> i um taught my children how to walk by faith as well and not by sight and learn to entrust them and their lives and their outcome in the covenant keeping God. The only, it's, there's no rule really for, there's no university for parenthood. I can only 
gave you three takes away, takeaways for today. One is relationship is key. As in everything, relationship is always essential. As parents, the first thing we need to cultivate, cultivate is a connection beyond the umbilical cord, a connection that would never be cut, would never be broken. We need to be connected to our children in the way that our Heavenly Father, we should be connected to our Heavenly Father. Also, the second one is we need to build an environment for them to thrive, to become the best versions of themselves. Build an environment wherein they can pursue their passion. And last but not the least, spiritual quotient, SQ. I don't know if there's such a thing. Emotional quotient, EQ, tops, intelligence quotient, IQ. So develop those um, three things in your kids. Spiritual quotient is a top. And teach your children well. And I'd like to introduce my husband of how many years? <laughs> That's why his name is Silver. <laughs> we made it to Silver. Thank you, Faika. Thank you for the recognition and the privilege to speak on behalf of our very deserving parents. Uh, there is no university for parenting, but it starts with this commitment. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. My children can testify that I have so many shortcomings, but I direct them to the perfect Father who is in heaven. The promise of Proverbs 22, 6, which says, point your kids to the right direction. When they're old, they won't be lost. That was fulfilled. My children turned out better than me. Paolo fulfilled my desire to, to serve the military. And Jem, Jara, is an excellent ESOL teacher and a better singer. <laughs> Whatever titles I've earned and achievements I've accomplished, none has been as important as my quest to live up to the label, Dad. I give much praise to the Lord, for he has given me the best woman to be my partner in raising up our kids and fulfilling his words that says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intention, one, um, in, uh, united in spirit, one intention. To him, we give all the glory and praise. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Silver and Pastor Christina Mabalot. And congratulations once again. So that's the first batch, guys. Are you guys ready to receive the second batch? <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on. Our three honorees are Mr. Eric and Ms. Imelda Ordonez from Reno, Nevada, nominated by Irene Granada. Married for 19 years, they have a child, one child. The greatest sacrifice that they went through was when their son went home to the Philippines to care for their sister little mother. For a month and a half uh, in 2007 and left her husband in the U.S. to take care of, of the mother. But they have to sold their cars, all their savings were, were, were garnished. And even though they spent a lot of money because money can buy any presents to her mother, for the remaining time, all the time, and with also the grandson. So uh, Eric and Imelda says they always love and honor parents. Care what you have to the less fortunate. They founded a nonprofit foundation in the Philippines and also here in the U.S. to help the needs of our Filipino Kababayans. As Roman Catholics, they believe that uh, we have one save God and Savior, and by sharing the needs of a less fortunate Kababayans in their journey to spirituality and carry the words of God. One of uh, some of the achievements, outstanding achievements, is a good attitude awarded by the Peppermill Hotel and Casino in 2006. Also, uh, she, 
she received an MBA in management in the University of Phoenix and received a certificate by the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in 2012. So ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Mr. Eric and Ms. Imelda Ordonez. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone, and good evening, and congratulations to all my co awardees. First of all, I would like to acknowledge Irene Grant for nominating me, and thank you to FICA President Alina Bahian, and Chairman of the Board, Mr. Giovanni Paquit, and of course, your officers for selecting us to be a recipient of this amazing award. In honor of our nonprofit foundation from 2009 up to the present, another token of recognition was sent our way. A beautiful plaque, indeed another memory to cherish. We have learned giving without expectations of any recognition or award. We helped and we will continue to help, not because we are rich, but because for me, it is the right thing to do. I have dealt with huge diversity. I have learned the deep meaning of hunger, the frustration of having nothing, the depressing moments of wanting simple things, yet it is impossible for them to have it. Even just a little love or even a smile, because a smile can hurt someone else's day. So with that being said, let us spread love by giving what we can to less fortunate individual or family. You can never go wrong in helping, whether it's small or big. Together, let's ignite humanity. Handobi Shirley Foundation Headquarters, my advocate team in YouTube, my YouTube family and friends, my husband, who is not here because he is babysitting our five-year-old son. This plot of recognition is for all of us. I love you all. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you so much, Imelda, for that uh, words. Our 11 honoree is Mr. Stephen and Janice Oshiro from Honolulu, Hawaii. However, we uh, unfortunately, we received a message that the husband had a stroke and he is in the hospital right now. So if you can please pray for them. Uh, I'm not sure if the wife is here. No, I don't think he's here. Yeah, so this is the award that they received from our, from FICA. But yeah, because of the unfortunate uh, circumstances, they cannot join with the awarding tonight. But congratulations again to Mr. Stephen and Janice Oshiro from Hawaii. Let's give them a round of applause. Moving on, our 12 honorees is Mr. Edbert and Ms. Norma Pareja from Bronx, New York, nominated by Elena Bahian. Married for 29 years, have four children, and have also faced challenges, financial challenges, because of all the, because of pandemic and all the many things that comes along with the pandemic. However, um, they sacrifice a lot for the family because Norma worked in Maryland as a teacher, but her family is living in New York City. So they're separated as, as a family because of work. Um, blessed with children showing the Filipino culture of Manupo and praying together to, uh, with the rosary and going to the church together. Uh, her children, their children receive academic achievements and also they are active contributors to the Ingold USA. Albert was a fourth degree Knights of Columbus in the Philippines and also a charismatic president. Norma is a member of the Catholic Women League and a member of the Filipino Ministry in St. Columba in Maryland. Few of the outstanding achievements include Norma being awarded as the most outstanding foreign worker in 2020, 
and also outstanding teacher of 2011 and outstanding teacher in 2010 grand champion and as a choreographer in street dancing so you can see the husband in new york and the wife in columbia in maryland <laughs> together let's uh, congratulate uh, mr edward and his norma pareja Thank good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, because of uh, some circumstances, I am away from home right now. And um, and anyways, uh, thank you to all honorees and uh, the PICA members and uh, Elena also, who um, nominates us to be a parents award, to receive a parents award tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you and really appreciate it uh, from the bottom of my heart and with my family. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. And congratulations once again. Okay. All right, we're getting close to our final honorees. Now let, uh, let us call Mr. Rifun and Miss Evelyn Kiblat from pa Pacoima, California, nominated by Elena Bahian, married for 30 years. They have three, uh, two children. Uh, Evelyn was hired uh, as a teacher, exchange teacher in the U.S. in 2008. And also that's the first time that she had to be aware from her family. The following year, her husband decided to come to America in order to accompany Evelyn. It was a very difficult situ uh, decision since the children will be left behind in the Philippines. Um, both of them are actually active in church as a choir member. And uh, and they have, after three years of marriage, both Rifon and Evelyn joined the Couples of Christ community. And they believe the community nourished the couple's relationship and their family. Some of the that outstanding achievement includes Evelyn receiving a certificate of recognition for per perfect attendance for five consecutive years. Now, wow. became a mentor for newly high teachers, mentor for teachers for evaluations. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Rifon and Evelyn Kiblat. Our next honorees are Mr. or Mrs. Lucy Rodriguez. The husband is Gregorio, but he already passed on. Uh, they were married in 1976, but Lucy's husband passed away in 1995. They have nine children and 17 grandchildren. The greatest challenge Lucy experienced when her husband passed away at the age of 43 is how to take care of the nine children by himself, by herself. Through her utmost dedication and hard work, she was able to raise her nine children and they became professionals. With God's guidance and inspiration, Lucy allowed her children to become missionaries of the Unification Church. The eldest daughter became missionary in Korea, the three children became missionary in Thailand, and the three children became missionary in America. Wow, all missionaries. Lucy's quality are respectful, caring, loving, and sacrificial love for her children. Lucy uh, served her community and in her home, especially in her hometown in the Philippines. Lucy is a Roman Catholic and in 1994 dreamed of Jesus and was guided to make the Unification Church. He is also, she is also an outstanding alumni awardee of the University of Southeastern Philippines in Davao del Norte. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you Lucy Rodriguez from Las Vegas, nominated by Glenn Mumbai. Congratulations, Nana. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, God, for this award that I received. And thank you also, the leader of the FICA and the members. And thank you also, Dr. Jung. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nana Lucy, and congratulations. She's very shy. <laughs> you made it. All right. Our 15th honoree is Engineer Alfredo and Dr. Velma Tabuada, nominated by Grace Valera and Francis Catalan from Washington, D.C. Married for 26 years, have two children, Velma leaving her family in Cebu City for teaching job in the U.S. was such a challenge. Her two daughters, Chessa, was only 11 years old and Yama was six years old at the time. Velma was apprehensive to leave them because the girls were still young and were very much emotional and psychologically attached to her. It was Alfredo's assurance and mitigated her worries knowing that he can handle them well, despite her absence, Velma worked in the Baltimore County Public Schools for years, for a year only. And since uh, the school isn't sponsoring her, then she had to move to another school system. I'm sorry, this is quite long. Uh, Velma and Alfredo are active in the community. They enjoy doing community service, especially the Migrant Heritage Commission a non-profit service-oriented organization that help immigrants in need of help. They're also officers of the Locano Society of America. Oops, I'm also a member. And are very active members of these two churches. The entire family every day would gather around, pray together, and share what values they have learned from the day and reflect on God's blessings on the family. Dr. Velma Tabuada received the 2017 Migrant Heritage Most Outstanding Migrant Award for Community Service and Promotion of the Cultural Diversity in Washington, D.C. The same year, she was awarded the Teacher of the Month, 2017, at the Franklin Square. The family has been selected as the Family of the Month by Knights of Columbus, uh, with Engineer Alfredo Tabuada being an active Knight of Columbus member. May I present to you our 15 honorees, Engineer Alfredo Jr. and Dr. Velma Tabuada. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for choosing us as one of the Outstanding Parents Awardee, uh, Alfredo and I, with our daughters, Chess and Yana, and our family in the Philippines are very candidly grateful for this very prestigious award. Uh, we would like to acknowledge Grace Valera for nominating us and with Francis Catalan. Thank you, Faika. Continue to be a blessing to others. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations, Lindsay. And finally, Oh, uh, we have the 15th uh, honorees, but also they're not around today. So we move on to our, I'm sorry, the 16th honorees. We move on to our final honoree for tonight, the honorees, Mr. Gary and Mayor Letty Lopez Viado from West Covina, California, nominated by Ria Enclu. Married for 15 years, have two children, Mayor Letty Lopez Viado experienced from poverty being someone as a role model. Her qualities are heart of a volunteer and giving her time for the sake of other people. She is a full-time mother and a full-time work in the city of West Covina, California as a mayor. With her, with her church, she did aid to humanity, community, excellent apps, and public safety and did teachers appreciation events. 
led the Women's Personal Safety and Environment Seminar with police officers, led a student film festival during the pandemic. She had holiday events for other homeless, foster, and low-income family. Her foundation has Christian values as a family. They attend the church, and also they do nightly prayers. Some of the achieve, uh, Asani achievement includes a Master's of Arts in Communication Studies, the City of LA Mayor's Process Improvement and Innovation Recognition Certificate, and Resolution of Commendation for Film West Covina, became the first Filipina Mexican Councilwoman to be elected in 2018 and the new mayor of West Covina. So let's may I present to you Mr. Gary and Mayor Leti Lopez Viado. And also, they will give a brief response on behalf of the second batch of our honors tonight. Welcome, Mayor Letty. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who put this together, including all the other upstanding parents. Uh, it means a lot, and we greatly appreciate that. A lot of society issues that we see in this world starts from home. So a strong family filled with love, faith, hope, it helps us society as a, whole, as a whole. And so we appreciate that. And we know it takes a lot of hard work. It has its ups, its downs, and there are tons of temptations out there. So obviously you do need God in your life. And so we, we do have our beautiful children and the good work that you do, your organization, and all the parents that are out there actually means a lot because it brings good to the society as a whole. So I just wanted to say thank you so much and make sure you hug your loved ones, you thank them, too. you know, it means a lot, give them a kiss, you know, and, and, and do that, bring love. Um, if there's that physical touch, there's that emotional, there you go, you see somebody kissing, Aww, that's so beautiful, I love that. I saw somebody right there give a, a nice kiss, so good job, and uh, that brings warmth, and so bring love, continue with that, stay strong, have faith, uh, we do go through bad times, but there's always good times. There's a light at the end. And uh, with God, with faith and all that, it means a lot. And so I just wanted to say thank you for this. It's an honor. And I hope that this continues and that you show this to others so that they can implement. And you want to be that role model. So I thank everybody. And thank you, Ria, <laughs> for nominating. I would have never considered because we live a busy life and multitasking a lot. So uh we greatly appreciate it so we love you all and wherever you are we pray for you guys and we just say thank you thank you <laughs> thanks awesome thank you so much uh, mr gary and mayor letty Viado. there you go folks ladies and gentlemen you have seen our 17 outstanding parents of the year for this year of 2021 and we have a special gift for you because right now we're gonna go right to the true love toast let us welcome the district pastor of family federation for world peace in district three pastor crescentia and leon de Godi, who will briefly share the process and the value of rededicating and blessing you today and renewing your marriage vows so a representative couple uh, uh, later on, on, on the, her talk will come on to share uh, to show to you to demonstrate to you the proper way of receiving this blessing so let us all welcome pastor crescentia and Lynn Dugody from new jersey thank you thank you so much pastor ej and uh, good evening to all of the distinguished participants of this auspicious awards ceremony. It's really our honor and our pleasure to be here with all of you tonight. Um, we want to express our heartfelt congratulations and also appreciation to each of the awardee couples this evening. Uh, you are a great inspiration to us. And we're so grateful for the investment that you're making into uh, your couple, into your family, into your children. As Mayor Letty was, you know, mentioning, we we all know that, you know, strong parents, strong families allows for us to create 
strong societies and a peaceful world. And everybody's longing for that, but it's so hard to uh, create that without really having true love and family. So tonight, uh, we're going to offer an opportunity to strengthen your marriages, strengthen your families um, through this true love toast. And, uh, you know, as parents, <laughs> as parents, we care always, you know, parents care, we care so much for our children. But sometimes it can be hard, right, in the husband and wife relationship um, to keep that harmony, to express true love to one another. Yep. And <laughs> really the expressions of God's love to one another. And we, we need opportunities to kind of renew ourselves, right? Renew our commitment to God and to each other, to our children. And we want to take that opportunity tonight and give that, I'd rather give that opportunity to you um, through offering this true love toast. This is actually called uh, a blessing ceremony and it was established by father and mother moon the beloved founders of the family federation and they established this tradition as a way of uh, actually in a, in the hopes of strengthening marriages and families all across the world you know through bringing um a deeper connection to god in marriage and in family and inspiring these couples to live for the sake of others, you know, live for each other within their marriages and their family, and also to live, of course, for their children and for the world around them, that it wouldn't be a marriage that's insular, but something um, that they're doing in service to others. And really, the couples that have been awarded here tonight, you are in so many ways already exemplifying this. So I hope that this Ceremony can really be uh, like an encouragement to you and give you a new spirit, a new energy in, conti in continuing to do the kind of parenting you're doing of your children, the service to your communities that, that you're already giving, uh, that it can give you a fresh spirit and also a stronger connection to each other as a husband and wife. Absolutely. So we're going to begin. And um, if you can, uh, make sure that you take your holy wine cup at this time. I believe um, all our awardees were sent a holy wine cup. And um, if you if you have it, go ahead and, and grab it now and make sure you're sitting together with your spouse. This is something if possible. <laughs> and uh, if your spouse has passed on and they're not here with you tonight, you can still participate um, symbolically. Uh, you can still participate with them in your heart, you know, with them in your mind. Um, so we just want to invite everyone to, to have this opportunity now. And you can follow along with Dr. Greg and Yuka Aguilon, uh, who will be kind of modeling through the different parts of this program. By the way, Lathan and I, we are standing this evening as representatives of Father and Mother Moon, who uh, we're actually going to bestow this blessing on you on behalf of them who are so inspired to give this blessing to your couple tonight. All right, so wives, um, now at this time to participate in the Holy Wine Ceremony, which in this ceremony, we are symbolically cleansing ourselves of any past mistakes. And we're welcoming in a pure, new, heavenly spirit into our marriages and into our families, kind of, you know, bringing in a cleansing into our whole body before we make a commitment, a recommitment as a husband and wife. So wives, please take the holy wine cup and you can uh, take off the lid and you're not going to drink the whole cup, but now drink half of the holy wine, wives. And just as you see, this is Akilan doing, you will pass with a bow the holy wine cup to your husband. With a bow. And husbands, please take now half of the holy wine cup. And if it's just you, you can take just the half and offer up the cup towards your spouse uh, who may not be present. Beautiful. And you can place that to the side. And at this time, we would like to invite you to affirm the four blessing vows. So after each vow that's going to be read by Leighton, 
um, please affirm the vow with a strong yes. So even though we can't hear you, we want to see the energy of your affirmation. So <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Do you, as a mature man and woman, pledge to rededicate your marriage centered on true love? Yes! Yes! All right. Do you pledge to be forever faithful and true to one another? Yes! Yes! All right. Do you pledge to raise your children to maintain their purity before marriage? Yes! yes. Will you pledge to support and contribute to the work of creating a peaceful world through families of true love? Yes! yes. yes. All right. Wonderful. Well, this blessing, we will now offer a benediction over your couples. So, husbands and wives, please turn to each other. Papa, I'm here. Hold each other's hands like, like this. Take each other's hands. You can bow your heads towards one another. And please join us as we offer a benediction over your couples to seal this blessing toast. Our dear, most beloved Heavenly Parent, our Creator, the one who gave all of us our lives and made it possible for us to be here together this evening for this very special Parents Award Ceremony and now participating in this blessing ceremony. Heavenly Parent, we know that each one of these couples is so precious to you. Each husband and wife is so precious to you. And truly, you are the reason that they are together. You are the reason they have their precious children. You are in the midst of this relationship they have as a husband and wife. You are in the midst of the relationship they have as parents and children. That is where you are dwelling. And your desire is for each one of these couples and families to experience the fullness of love and the fullness of joy, to be an expression and an embodiment of your true love on this earth. Heavenly Parent, our society is in desperate need of exemplary couples and families. And this evening we are honoring these couples and families who are striving to be these kinds of examples to their children. So we ask God that you bless these couples, that you seal them, that you cover them with your love and your blessing, that you strengthen them as husbands and wives, that there can be nothing that can tear them apart, nothing that can get in the way of the commitment they have to you and to each other. Allow them to feel the fullness of your love and your support, and even in their challenges and in their difficulties, that they can be brought through any difficulty, brought through any challenge, able to become more and more connected to you and to each other as husband and wife, and able to pour out your love to their precious children, raising them up as sons and daughters of you, their heavenly parent, raising them up to be sons and daughters of good character, contributing to their society, saving themselves for their future marriages and families. Heavenly Parent, we thank you again for being present this evening and for already all that you've done to guide these couples and families thus far. I ask that you continue to go forward with each one, loving them, supporting them, encouraging on them on their journey as couples and families. We together, as a community, want to support one another, encourage one another, and walk together centered on your love. All of this I want to offer up and pray on behalf of all those who have gathered here in the name of your beloved son, Jesus, and in our names as a blessed central family. Adieu. Amen and adieu. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Crescentia and Leighton Degodi, for giving the blessing to our couples tonight. Such a wonderful gift that they're receiving. And we continuously pray for you and your families. Our mom. And congratulations once again. So at this time, representing all. Oh, I call you. May we request now 
Dr. Greg Agulan and Yuka Agulan to lead us in cutting the ceremonial cake. There you go. Let's see your face. If I, I don't know if uh, this couples may prepared some cake. If you did, it's now time to bring your cake. <laughs> and let's celebrate together the sweetness of your love and of your marriage. So are you always ready? Let's sing congratulations to you, okay? Everyone, congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations to you. All right. You can Congratulations to all. Congratulations, Uncle and Auntie. Amazing, amazing blessing. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, Auntie. 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 Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for that. Congrats, Evelyn. I'm right and, on. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. We can yeah. have more congratulations later. But at this point in time, we are so happy. Both uh, to, 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 we're so happy also to receive a representative from the Philippine consulate uh, in New York City. You know, since the start of our Outstanding Parents Awards, that have been supporting us every year since the beginning. And also this uh, this person that I'm about to introduce to you is the person who inducted our current officers two years ago in Elizabeth, New Jersey. So we're happy again to see you. And I'd like to call on now the consul of uh, the Philippine consulate in New York. He is the head of the civil registration, passport and visa sections and the chairman of Overseas Voting Secretary in New York City. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the Honorable Ricardo Abuhela III for his congratulatory remarks. Hey. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ms. Elena Bahia, uh, FICA President. Mr. Giovanni Packet, uh, FICA Chairman. To the officers and members of FICA, your distinguished guests, visitors, and friends, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant evening to all. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Uh, first and foremost, I wish to extend my warm greetings to the officers and members of the Filipino community of uh, Filipino International Community of America, and your guests as you celebrate your fourth Outstanding Parents Awards. You know, in, in this challenging time where we could really not go about with our usual activities, uh, I'm impressed that you still find ways to continue with this uh, worthwhile endeavor in recognizing outstanding parents. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been said several times tonight, but one of the distinguishing characteristics of human society and specifically with our culture is that parents always play a crucial role in the family. Being a parent is already a challenge, but being a good parent, especially in these times, is an even greater task. It's no mean feat. Nowadays, even with the modern family where both parents uh, go to work, parents still continue to play an important role in the household. Uh, we have a saying in the Philippines that the parents are the pillars that keep the family standing strong. Ang mga magulang, ang haligi, ang tahanan. Therefore, I would like to commend FICA for focusing on this important sector of the family, the parents. It has already been said, but the family is one of the important building blocks of a healthy society. Thus, by recognizing the role parents play in the welfare of the family, it basically recognizes the role that parents play 
as good and law-abiding citizens that ensures the continued welfare of the community and state. Well, this is because uh, the welfare of the community leads to the welfare of the state, and these depend on the strengths of its core building block, which is the family. So by recognizing outstanding parents in public events such as this, FICA showcases parents that are worth emulating and who can be an inspiration to others as well. By replicating their good example, we create stronger families, which results in stronger communities, which eventually will result in a strong country. I commend the Filipino International Community of America and outstanding parents who were awarded tonight. May you continue to be the custodians of the best of our culture and ensure that the younger generation of parents do not forget the importance of their role and what it plays in our community and society. My warmest congratulations once again to the officers and to the members of FICA. The Consulate General of the Philippines in New York is proud of what you are doing for your country. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you so much, Honorable Richarte Abuela. We really thank you for coming on to me again. As always, the support of the Consulate is very much appreciated by our community. All right. So we are down to the last two, three items of our agenda. I'm sorry, it's like 15, 16 minutes later. But uh, let's now have received a congratulatory song to be rendered, to be given to us by Sinwa Ayana, entitled True Love. This is especially for all our honorees tonight. True Love. Take it away, Sinwa.
model of these family cultures. And when we say the model, they are the model of the culture of peace and love. So I would like to encourage everyone to take the next step. And that is how we to be able to receive and to level up your blessing. And just like our president say, we are all inviting you for our blessing event this coming June. I hope all of you will going to be there. So as my job, I would like to encourage to acknowledge everyone tonight. I am so grateful for all your presence. Let me start by giving thanks to our Dr. Chan Si Kyung. Can we have a great applause for him? Because he's always so as a fatherly heart to our community. I would like also to appreciate the presence of our our district leader, Presencia Digode, as well as Na Naukimir Yoshiroda. Please let us have our warm applause. And also to our honorable Ricardi Abuela. And also to our president, Leo Hallow. Also, this event will never going to be happen without all those people who are working behind. Let us thank everybody, our nominators and our advertisers. This is really a collaborated event. We have so many partners with this. So let us start by thanking Ria, Yen, Mary, Jay, Elena, Doreen, Francis, Lee, Janela, Ruben, and Cirillo, as well as our elder sister. Esther Batino. Let us have a warm applause for all these people. They are the nominators. Also, not to mention all of the hardworking people. Let's start with the board of members. Let us start with Kuya Bobby, our two, two Edwards, Kuya Edward Prangheim and Kuya Edward Tuske, especially with the guidance of, especially of EJ Rapada. Also, I'd like to thank Ati Merlin Velasco, Ati Mila Balanay, Ruben, Joy, and Greg Agulan. Let us have a warm applause for our board of directors. And not to forget, not to mention our executive officers, Glenn and Crispin, our Madame Elena, Elisa Medina. Let us have a warm applause to them. Jay Alvarez, Mary Big, Jocelyn, Don and Dell. Thank you so much, everyone. And once again, this is a message of Paika. Let us keep blessing our nation. Let us keep blessing our country. And as long as we keep on blessing, giving blessing, this country will always stand great. Thank you so much. At magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Mabuhay ang Pilipino. All right. Thank you so much, Vice President Ju Gisli, so for those acknowledgments. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is because we want to post this on our media feeds and our websites. So if everyone can go to gallery view, let me go get there. We want everyone to be represented in one screen and our tech team, we're gonna get a group photo, okay? So we're gonna do is we just keep smiling. <laughs> if, you, if you're, our uh, video is off, it's now time to turn it on so we can see you. You can, uh, you, can uh, you know, take, make, make sure your, your faces are okay, your, your sweats, your tears. <laughs> Please wear a big smile. There you go. I can see everyone here. We have uh, more than 70 right now. And uh, by the way, this is being broadcast as live in Facebook and YouTube. So it's not just these people watching right now. There's thousands of others out there who are actually watching right now. And maybe request the awardees, if you can, please bring once more your plaques so we can see them. There we go. All right. I think we're ready. Please smile. All right. Tech team, it's now time to get photos. Let us know when you're done, okay? Keep smiling, guys. Maybe it's going to scroll screen. Okay. Are we good? Okay, does that mean we're good? <laughs> All right, 
I guess they got they got our photos. So thank you once more. Thank you so much. And to close, as we begin uh, polling for God's presence in our celebration, I'd like also to offer our gratitude to our heavenly parent. Let us now welcome the uh, the presiding bishop of the Association of Christian Evangelists International to give us the closing prayer. Let's welcome Bishop Rene Malianas. Thank you, Bishop EJ. Good evening, everyone. I would like to request all of you to please be silent for a moment and let us put ourselves in the holy presence of God. Let us pray. Our heavenly and most gracious loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we can close our program with our thanks to you. We would like to thank you for the opportunity that we can come as family, an association that would like to build a family and dedicating the husbands and wives who are here tonight. In the celebration of the fourth outstanding parents who are awarding the Filipino community, Filipino International Community of America has spearheaded and has emphasized the importance of family as building block of our society. So we would like to thank you. But above all, we would like to praise you and glorify your name and bless you for the blessings that you've given us. May you continue to bless the officers and the members of FICA, the awardees who had received the recognition tonight that this would not be the time for them to stop doing what is good, but this award would encourage them to do more for the honor of your glory and for the honor of your name. We pray for each of the family that is represented tonight, and may you will continue to be with us. And now, brothers and sisters, May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop René Bolianas, for the benediction and prayer so folks that ends our celebration and awarding and we'd like to see you next time and don't forget june 26 is gonna be a blessing festival you can bring your children your grandparents your uncles your aunts please contact the person who nominated you and they'll give you all the details of our next grand celebration happening in june once again, congratulations to our honorees, to our guests, and to all those who are participating tonight. God bless you. We love you all until we see each other again. Okay. Have a Thank good night. you. Thank you so much. You celebrate so much. Let's play some music to dance. Celebrate so much. and Rodi. Mami G, congrats. Thank you, Jen. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. Congratulations. Hang dancing now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ate. Nodi. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations, Edward and Bing.